friends, I'm Abby and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be chatting through all the books that I have picked up in the months of August and September. So the end of summer book haul I would say. There's not, there's not too many of them, it's just a, well, I was about to say a handful, but there's more than a handful, but like there's a, a good little selection of books here that have been acquired. So I will start off with the couple of gifts that I have received and then I'll move on to the ones that I bought myself. So I received Fireborn by Rosaria Munda. This was uh, gifted to me by my lovely friend Kate, uh, whose channel I will link down below. I believe this was like a belated birthday present or a, a birthday present that took its time getting to me. It missed its opportunity to be in my birthday book haul and made its way into the next one, which, ha which has been a little while because I've tried to not, I really tried not to like buy or like, yeah buy that many books since then because there was like a lot of books that came into the house then so I really well tried to restrain myself since then but uh Fireborn I'm really excited to get into this I I've heard really good things from both people that read uh YA and adult um it is YA, YA but I think it leans quite political I mean there's dragons based on like the cover that there's dragons I know book two is out and I think the third book's coming out next March so I think I will plan to read the whole series once the third book is out and then be able to binge it all, hopefully, because I've heard about the different cliffhangers at the end of book one and two. So I just think it's going to be best if I, if I binge. So really looking forward to reading this and thank you, Kate. I also received The Black Coast by Mike Brooks. This is gifted to me by my friend Vish from Books With V, who, if you haven't checked out Vish's channel, you should so should like she is the cutest most lovely person ever she has like the best accent she's from australia and it's just her, her voice is just, it's just so therapeutic to listen to i could just watch fish's videos all day like on repeat just back to back just keep going because i don't know there's just like with her bookshelves and her like oh, i could just I, I just want to move there <laughs> and I like, live with, surrounded by her books and Vish. So uh, Vish just messaged, I don't know, she just sent this out of the blue and said like, thank you for being a good egg. So thank you so, so much Vish for The Black Coast. I've heard really good things about this from uh, my friend Gregory at Gregory the Perch. I know he really, really liked this. Um, again, I think this is dragons. So yes, dragons. Maybe I have a theme here with dragon books after the first two being about dragons. So another dragon book, but I believe quite different to Fireborn. And I think it's not quite like what you would expect from a epic fantasy, because I think it looks at like different peoples and different cultures and really focuses on that as opposed to like big battles. But I could be wrong. And then the final uh, gift was The Emperor's Blade by Brian Staveley. This was gifted to me by my friend Sharon, who also has a channel which I can link. So thank you so, so much, Sharon. I uh, was prompted to want to read this when seeing an interview with Brian Staveley on Patrick Leo's channel. He, I don't know, he just completely sold it. Like, I, I watched an author interview and I'm like, oh, you look so, you sound so cool. You look so cool. Like, I want to read all your books. Like, the way you talk about books just makes me really excited to read your books. So after watching that interview, I felt like I had to read his, his books. So I know he has this trilogy and then he recently this year had a publication which is like a spin-off standalone in the same world. Uh, I believe this is like epic adult fantasy. I think it's um, Asian inspired or how it takes some inspiration from Asia. Okay, and that like the emperor has been murdered and his children are trying to like figure out what to do. And they're like using their different skills to figure out what to do with the empire following their father's death. Now moving on to some other books. I received my first ever physical arc from a publisher, which was a complete surprise. I had no idea this was coming. Um, really, really like surprised because I, I, I just, I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't expecting it. I was like, I, because where I live, I'm in a block of apartments and we have a concierge service and then you get a notification every time you get a post. And I got this notification. I was like, I, I haven't ordered anything. I wonder what it is. You know, going down there and being like, you could see on the envelope, it was like little brown. I was like, I've got that, 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 that me. Um, 
And so, yes, it was from Orbit and it is The Justice of Kings by Richard Swan. Uh, this is a release that's coming out next February, I believe. Yeah, 24th of February is the stated release date currently for this. At least that's what it says on the back. When I like opened the package and read the blurb, I literally was like, this is an Alan book um, from Alan from the Library of Alexandria. And it really does sound like the perfect book for Alan. Uh, it sounds really much like the perfect book for if you like the great coats. This character is a justice, a judge, jury and executioner all in one. He is sworn to travel the empire and uphold the law by way of his sharp intellect, arcane powers and skill as a swordsman. Yet these are dangerous times. So I believe it is the first book in a trilogy. And yet really, really excited to get it. And like, I, was, I don't know, I was just so emotional when it turned up because like, it was signed and numbered and I was like, me? You sent it to me? Um, so yeah, really, just really, really excited to get it and address to me. Like, uh, so yeah, really excited to get this probably uh, in January so that I read it before it's released. And now moving into the books that I have bought. So I did a Blackwell's order. I do have an affiliate link with Blackwell's. Uh, so I did buy a few books from them and I really, really recommend them. Um, they're an independent UK bookstore. Uh, they have a few, I mean, I guess it's an independent chain. Like there's a few dotted around the UK. The big um, shop is in Oxford. So it was one of my local-ish shops growing up that I visited because I grew up near Oxford. Um, so I don't know, it just feels I, I, I really love supporting them and that they do free international shipping. So I picked up the second and third book in the Crown of Feather series. I read the first book in August um, and then I wanted to dive straight away into the rest of the series. So I picked up books two and three. Unfortunately, it seems as though they only published the first book in the UK. So I've had to get the US editions for the second and third book. So annoying, so annoying when they've done that. I don't know why they stopped publishing the series in the UK. I don't know. I really don't know. So I've got a UK paperback and then I've got these two hardbacks to complete the series. I have since read the second book and I still have the third book to read, but I'm really excited to get into this third book. This whole trilogy, it's a multiple perspective YA series, but in some ways it has, I'd say it's a really good bridge if you're wanting to move up into adult. Um, it, it's definitely still YA, but it has, a, I'd say, quite an expansive world building, which mirrors, I'd say, more of an adult world, world building type vibe. With this expansive world, there's multiple POVs and uh, they're following these characters, which are Phoenix Riders. Um, and at the beginning of the first book, uh, Veronica, our main character, birth, no, she doesn't birth the phoenix, but like she finds a phoenix egg and the phoenix is born. Uh, and then it's following these different characters as they learn to fight, learn to ride these phoenixes and different warring empires. Uh, and yeah, following like the history of the phoenix riders and this world. So I have really, really enjoyed it. It's really like, I don't know, like the twists and the turns, uh, like the endings of these books. I'm like, Oh wow. So yeah, really excited to get into the third one and yeah, very happy with these. I completely destroyed this book. It doesn't, it looks okay because I kept the dust jacket off, but I destroyed it in, uh, on holiday, uh, in Greece. So, um, we are hiding all the sins. In that same order, I picked up The Blackest Heart by Brian e. Durfee. This is the second book in the Five Warrior Angels series by him. Uh, I read The Forgetting Moon last month in August, <laughs> time. I read the, forget, the Forgetting Moon in August, really, really liked it. I have a whole discussion on this book uh, up on my channel with a few other lovely booktubers where we discuss it at length and talk both spoilers and non-spoilers. So it starts off without any spoilers to try and encourage everyone to read it because we thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And then this is the second book, which I had to own to, so I could continue. I've been buddy reading these with my friend Sam and our friend Joanna as well. Uh, Joanna's channel I will link below. Sam has an Instagram so I'll also link that. And we've had so much fun reading these, like so, so much fun. I'm currently reading this and about 200 pages into this absolute behemoth because it's 900 pages. So currently reading this and loving it. If you like like assassins and 
castles with secret passageways and just like prophecies and it's just got so many like epic fantasy tropes uh lots of focus on like religion in this world and like battles and it does lean grim and i'd say that they're like the the 200 pages i've read of this book there's been some very grim scenes like so if you do not like grimness in your books these might not be the ones for you because they definitely verge on the grim so uh yeah but i've been thoroughly thoroughly enjoying these and just so excited to read more and then i'm going to be sad when i finish this because i'm gonna have to wait for the third one but yeah really 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 happy with this uh, a couple of other ones that I picked up. I picked up The Wolf and the Woodsman by Ava Reed. I went book shopping with my friend Sophia from Sophia's Thoughts. A couple of weekends ago, we did a little like bookshop tour of London. We weren't just going to go to like Goldsboro and like Forbidden Planet. And then we just kept going. We just, we just kept going because, you know, if, you book, <laughs> if you're at one bookshop and they're like, oh, it's only like five minutes walk to the next one. Oh, and it's only a few minutes walk to the next one. And so we just, we just kept going. Um, and we had, yeah, like, food obviously like yeah, it's hungry work book shopping so i i was quite restrained and i just picked up this one and i have actually already read it and i talked about it in my august wrap up um so yeah i really really enjoyed this um and i really like the cover and yeah can't wait to go book shopping with sophia again <laughs> like it was such a fun afternoon uh some prized books that i found that some that i've been hunting for one of them in particular is these are going to be really heavy the second and third book in the stormlight archive in the uk hardcovers which are out of print so i found oathbringer in august uh, i was sent one of my friends sent me she was like oh look abby oathbringer here it is uh so thank you charlotte for like give, sending me the link this is actually in really good condition um like you can tell i'd say that it's been read but oh i mean it hard, hardly like it's pretty much new-ish condition like very very happy with this purchase it was like 10 pounds it was wasn't very much and yeah so very happy to have found this i then was like i own books one three and four am i ever gonna find book two and i did i did i found book two the impossible to find book two in the uk hardcover now this one isn't in such good condition. It's got some very yellow pages and it does feel very fragile. I think I'm gonna be having to read this with like, I don't know, like really, really carefully. It's it's sensitive, it's, it, it's sensitive, okay? So, but I'm very happy to have found it. Uh, I mean, I guess if they ever do re-release, I might buy it again and get like a nice new edition. But for now, I have the whole set all four of them they can all be well they're not all in a line because and if you don't know like i have all my unread books at the bottom of the shelf and then when i read them they can move on up so once i read these they can move on up to join the way of kings and then they can all be together in their line but uh, i'm really looking forward to getting into this definitely want to get to it before the end of the year uh, now that i own it everyone tells me like words of radio is their favorite pretty much in the whole of the storm archive so Yes, I'm so happy to have found this. Like, so, so happy to have found this. And for a very reasonable price. Like, this I've seen on eBay for like 150 to 400 pounds, and I got this for under 30. And then the final book that I have picked up in the past couple of months is Stories of Your Life and Others by Ted Chiang. I found this in my local used bookstore, and there's actually quite a funny story to this. So, I picked this up last weekend when I was back at my parents and that morning I had watched Ben from Overly Average Ben. He he did a review of Ted Chiang's other work, other book, uh, which I watched, which I watched that morning. And I was like, oh, that sounds really, really interesting. And he was saying about one of the short stories, he was like, as an example, in this short story, it really talks about fate and whether things are predestined and whether things are just, whether you have any free will. So I watched that review. I then went for a walk, like walk around the local area into the countryside a bit. And then on my way back, I was like, oh, I'll pop into Oxfam, just see, what's, see what books they have. And there this was. And I know it wasn't the same book, but it's the same author. And it's not as though there's a very big fantasy and sci-fi section. So I just sort of question like how I went from watching a video where he talks about fate and destiny and free will to going into the bookshop and finding this 
there having like it's a small town and generally the biggest sections are like the crime thriller like there's lots of crime and thriller there's not very much fantasy or sci-fi in our bookshops so it was just really bizarre and i was like well the, the chance of me watching that video to then finding it in the bookshop I, I don't know it was just it was a bit freaky so i was like well i'm gonna have to buy it like now like i've obviously been predestined to buy this book so i bought the book and i have started it i've read a couple of the short stories 85 pages so i've read two of the short stories in here um and i'm just going to gradually i think work my way through the rest of them just every so often read a couple of these uh, they've definitely like they definitely make me think like i've been mulling them over uh since reading them and that's just two of them and so definitely yeah it really making you really makes you think really makes you not like they're tricky to read like they're very easy to read but they're the concepts of them have made me like mull things over since reading them so those are all of the books that i picked up in the past couple of months let me know what books you have bought recently i would love to know and thank you so much for watching please like comment and subscribe and i will see you in my future videos bye